Hey, like the Fraternicons? Want more Fraternicons? Go to the new channel. One new Fraternicons video a week there, edited by my brother. Link in the description. Video! So I didn't jump on this figure when I should have, and pretty much by the end of a short weekend, they were sold out everywhere, either due to consumer demand or scalpers. So I was bummed at not being able to check one out for the channel. But eventually I decided that I did want one enough to check eBay. And I found one being sold by what my brother dubbed as a chaotic goods scalper. Because they were only selling this for six bucks more than regular retail price and then $10 shipping as well. I mean, if it's keeping the stuff out of the hands of the assholes who are scalping things for double or even triple what the figures are worth, instead only charging you like 6% more than what the figure was being sold for by actual vendors, then hell yeah, I can get behind that kind of scalping. You go, dude. Like, I mean, screw the fact that I have to be happy about getting overcharged at all, but like, hey, this was worth what I paid. Oh no, I gave the review away already. Review! Okay, so for folks who have no idea what this is, this is the Mastermind Creations Optus Pexis. MMC, the company who made the best Bruticus on the market by far, their main bread and butter is actually producing figures based on the IDW designs for the Transformers. It's a niche that no one else has ever really tried to fill, and they really shouldn't because MMC are gods. And I don't think they know how to produce a bad product. The worst thing I ever got from them was the Tyratron, and that thing is still a glorious piece that makes me smile like a mook every time I look at it. Anyways, this is MMC's rendition of Optimus Prime from the IDW comics back before he got the Matrix when he was still Orion Pax, who, in that continuity, was an action hero cop the likes of which you used to see in 80s movies. But not like the out-on-the-edge type. Like, imagine the most lawful good paladin you can think of with no fear of death and a burning need to save everyone while dispensing justice. Cop Superman mixed with John Woo, basically. It's super fun, go read it. More Than Meets the Eye issues 9 through 11. And, I've said this before and I'll say it again, Prime has gotten done dirty ever since the 86 movie. He is now a shell of the character we fell in love with and there is a good reason why there's a growing number of people who don't actually like Optimus at all. Those issues reminded me why I liked Prime in the first place. So, that's what we're going to be taking a look at with this one. And at the end, I will update my What's the Best Optimus Prime with new rankings. Anyways, so now that you know what this is, how's it holding up to the look it's supposed to be emulated? Pretty good. This is a faithful, if not necessarily extraordinarily accurate take on the design. Don't get me wrong, it's quite accurate, but there are some pretty serious details that are off. For starters, his chest is much wider than it's supposed to be, and the pec windows are much taller, resulting in them being the wrong shape. The center of his chest is the core culprit of the excess width that it now has, and it is also strangely domed when it very specifically wasn't in any of the comics. And honestly, there is a very stupid reason for that I'll get to later. The last thing I do want to point out is that his wheels are very much in the wrong place. They are on his back when they are supposed to be between his collar and his shoulders, framing his head. It's likely that they did this to allow the figure to pose better, which is one of the main selling points of this design which I think have been exaggerated a bit. Because while this is probably the most poseable figure in my collection, the key term is probably, and if so, not by a lot. But we will get there. So, with a few complaints about the accuracy of this design out of the way, how does it look? In a word, pretty spectacular. Much of IDW has some of my favorite design aesthetics by far for the Transformers, and this design is no exception. It's recognizable as Prime while being distinct. It's its own unique take with strong lines and its own identity. It's also covered in cool mechanical detail that is well sculpted. I have to say, I'm pretty smitten with it. Head sculpt though is slightly disappointing. It's based on a single panel where his noggin was a bit off model, and as a result, the faceplate ended up narrow and tall while his head ended up slightly rounded. In almost all other shots, I think his head had a cooler design. It's not bad, and it's certainly distinct. You could argue that it looks like this because he's Orion Pax, and this is just the more youthful version of his head, and there can be merit to that, but it doesn't change the fact that I prefer the normal design from every other panel. That said, it's still good looking, it's still cool, very well sculpted, very well painted. I'm not mad about this, it's fantastic. I just think there was a better choice to be made because I don't know why, but this head design reminds me of a cat like this. I guess if you're a robo furry, that's going to be a positive for you. Anyways, head and body all looks great. This is so dynamic, there is just basically nothing you can do to make this not look cool. Just standing there and he looks dope as shit. And let me be clear here, he does not have a bad angle. There is no direction that you can look at this thing from and see anything else than a sick as fuck looking robot. The design is great and the execution was great as well, if less than completely and utterly perfect in its page accuracy. Panel accuracy, comic accuracy, I don't know what term to use. Accessories. He comes with two collapsing guns with folding grips that his hands have into. No, they don't tab into his hands, his hands tab into them. Honestly, the connection is pretty pathetic, there's definitely worse out there, and the hand's ability to grip these with the fingers does help, but these do pretty easily get knocked from his mitts. You can use the collapsing ability on the guns for some chum chum action. He also comes with a pair of arm cannons that you don't have to stick on, but if you do, they unfortunately have the parts form off in order to transform this guy. I need to come up with a ranking system for parts forming because I'm always getting asked why some parts forming is more or less egregious than others. On the scale of parts forming, I would say that this one is committing a lesser sin, because you could just look at these as arm mounted guns, and they don't form an integral part of the mode, so it's more weapon storage than it is parts warming in its traditional sense. And it's also not completely mandatory because you don't have to put them on at all in the first place. It's not less complete without them, he's just got less firepower. So yeah, it's not fun to do, but this isn't compromising the figure like a lot of parts warming does. Lastly, it comes with this, and fuck this thing. I don't need another Matrix and this is the ugliest, doofiest, most impractically huge one any company has ever produced. And this is the thing that jacked up the chest. I don't know why they didn't just shrink this down a lot, but in order to make this bulky thing fit in his chest, they made the center cavity wider, and that's why it's domed, to fit the rounded shape. 
I hate this thing. I hate everything about it. From the way it disassembles, to the way it looks, to the way it's hard to store because you have to really untransform the figure in order to put it away or take it out. There is just nothing good about this thing. Posability. As I alluded to earlier, this figure is not as impressively posable as many people are acting like it is. There really isn't much of anything that this is doing that's new. The Magic Square Light of Freedom, in fact, is giving this a hard-fought competition in posability. This has a lot of joints you've seen before, some more rare than others, but it's also missing some joints that I find to be absolutely shocking. I don't think the level of posability this figure has is necessarily what's impressing people, as the way this figure can pose I don't really see as actually pushing the envelope all that far as to what a figure can do. What I see as really truly impressive about how this thing poses is the scale at which it's doing it at. Because this is not masterpiece scale, guys, no. It's modern leader, modern big leader scale. The 86 Grimlock is actually slightly bigger than this, so the fact that it's cramming all of the admittedly fantastic posing it has into such a small package is truly what's blowing me away. Anyways, sorry for the second extra long posability segment in one week, but that is a huge amount of this figure's draw, so not covering it thoroughly would be a disservice to you. Head's got a ton more range than is typical, though it's a little annoying because the neck always wants to hinge back, and that's really pretty ugly, but it does let you get some serious grainage. Shoulders have a really awkward looking butterfly joint that gets you back and forward, less on the forward, but you can untransform it for slightly more, though it is awkward enough to feel like a workaround. Tons of upward range on the shoulder, and a bicep swivel that will get hung up if you have it straight down so it can't rotate in. And this is the first issue that this figure has with posing. If you want his arm bent in, then you have to move it out to the side just a bit. That's a pretty easy fix, so it's an absolutely minor issue. Elbow has all of the bend in the world, with a cool auto automatic piston, though I do worry that this part seems a little fragile. If you want him to point his arm cannons like he's using them, then you are going to have to remember how the bicep swivel works because the way the elbow is designed doesn't allow for any independent forearm rotation. Then he's got insane hands. I've seen hands this complex before. I've seen hands more complex before. I have never seen hands this complex on a figure even twice this size before. The Giga Power figures have to be the closest approximation of these hands at this scale, but these feel much less brittle than those. The second time I ever transformed the Giga Power Swoop, one of the thumbs tore off, but these just don't feel like something I have to be worried about. And if they do break, MMC sent a couple of replacement fingers with every copy just in case. That's customer service right there. Every finger has every joint, all with more range than a human has, and he not only has a wrist swivel, but he also has, I don't know what this joint is called, hand flip? He can pull off the Adam Jensen neck breaker attack, which is really cool. He's got sideways crunch, which is actually the first time I'm seeing this on a Transformers figure, so that is special. He's also got two different ab crunches forward and back, one of which you can break the transformation connection on and get a massive amount of range out of. Moving his skirt panels is really satisfying. They feel like they are actually hydraulic, or like they are on some rubber o ring or something. Shockingly limited backwards movement on the legs, but because MMC thought of basically everything, the legs are in hinged swivels which lets the hip drop down and grants you tons more range on them. All the sideways you could want, knees where apparently this part is really fragile so I'm afraid to push them to their limits, but even so, these have a ton of bend and a really cool automatic kneecap that there is a special step in the transformation to enable. I've never seen that before and it's really cool. Also, the thigh panels slide up and down as well. Foot has tilt, pivot, and toe, but no rotate, which is just not something I expected this thing to be missing. But as you can see, yes, this is very postable, incredibly so at this scale, but I do have figures like the Magic square that rival this. Really, the hands and the sideways crunch are the only things this has going for it that the Magic Square is flat out losing on, and the sideways crunch is the only thing the Magic Square has no version of. Now, at the number of words where one of my scripts would normally end is where we begin the transformation. Once again, MMC shows off that ludicrous transformations don't have to exist in order to achieve an amazing figure. Again, this isn't mind-blowingly complex, it's mind-blowingly simple. Not one step of this should really even be leaving the journeyman Transformers fans scratching their head for too long. I say that having been stumped by the shins the first time for like five straight minutes because the way they work is very unique and this comes in truck mode so I didn't know where to start with it. Also, the skirt armor works a way that I don't know that I've ever seen, but again, it's really simple, just not something people tend to think to do. And it kind of faux forms? And let me take a moment to spell that out because clearly based on the comments I get, a lot of people don't know what I'm saying when I use the word. F-A-U-X-F-O-R-M. Faux is French for fake, so fake forms basically. Anyways, so it kind of faux forms with a truck grill, but at the same time, not, because in vehicle mode, it doesn't have a grill. So, is a part that's supposed to look like another part off of a different design faux forming? The alt mode evokes the comic design, but not all that successfully. The comic was more a large car with maybe a bit of a racing vent to it. This comes across as more a truck or some kind of behemoth land crawler that could house an entire battalion of soldiers. Though, to be fair, it did sometimes look more like this than it did the car thing. It was kind of inconsistent from panel to panel. It's a better Cybertronian alt mode than some of these things get. This does look like a thing rather than a box on wheels for the most part, but it doesn't entirely look like the thing it's supposed to be, except in the most general sense. And I doubt too many people are going to care a whole heap of a lot about this mode. Roll's okay, but it could be better in that regard. So, how does this thing stack up in a what's the best? Well, if this thing is duking it out for first place against the Magic Square, I'd say this loses. Eschewing the normal criteria of what's the most accurate interpretation of the classic design of the character, because this figure isn't trying to be the classic design, we can change it to what's the most accurate to the design of the character that these things are trying to portray. And in that regards, this loses. The Magic Square is more accurate in its depiction of the classic Optimus Prime than this is in its 
this depiction of the IDW Orion packs, though not by a lot in robot mode. However, in vehicle mode, the MS has a more significant lead in accuracy. Though that is, again, less fair to the figure that is dealing with an interpretation that didn't really have a set look in that regard. This does have more posability than the Magic Square, but the Magic Square is really only a step behind. However, in terms of transformation, Magic Square blows this out of the water. Where this is not offensive in transformation, the Magic Square is tons of fun. And the alt mode on the Magic Square is way more cohesive than this one's. So, in comparison to the Magic Square, the advantages this has over that aren't all that strong. Whereas, where the Magic Square is leading, the gaps are vast. So, once again, the Magic Square retains its number one position. But, dropping down to the number two spot against the Transform Element OP leader, and the MMC basically completely flips the script. Yes, that is slightly more accurate to its chosen character than this is in robot mode. And again, still more accurate than this in the vehicle mode. But whereas this only had a slight advantage in posing against the Magic Square, the difference here is a vast gulf. The Magic Square was already crushing the Transform Element in that regard, and that means that this is crushing the Transform Element even harder. And whereas the Magic Square had a more fun transformation, that is completely reversed here. The Transform Element is one of the least fun transforming figures that I own. It is a pain in the ass that takes like 20 minutes every time I want to switch modes, and it's one of the few figures that I look at on my shelf and just go, nah, I don't want to transform that. And I can decide to flip between modes on most any figure I own. And this next part is going to be a bit subjective, but I don't think this alt mode is as cohesive as the Magic Squares. I find the back end of the Transform Element to look very unfinished, though I do understand that people enjoy it for not having the underpants on the trailer hitch. As a result, I'm going to say that this is a wash on the cohesiveness front. So in the categories where this loses to the OP leader, it barely loses. But in the categories where it's winning, it crushes the Transform Element, grinding it into dust beneath its heel. So this is now resting at a comfortable second slot just behind the Magic Square, and knocking down the OP leader to a distant third. If you want a masterpiece scaled Optimus, this is not the figure to get. It's not big enough to fit that role. If you want an IDW styled Optimus, this is the only figure there is to get. But if you are just on the market for a cool new design for Optimus with a ton of posing, probably the most of any figure you will find, this is a top tier pick. I might have undersold this the entire video through, but for the second video in a row, calling this a masterpiece isn't good enough for this figure. And that's not half of what I have to say, but it's enough of what I have to say. And I know, you know, what everyone else tells you to do at the end of these videos. So if you liked what you saw here, please do that. And if you'd like to take it a step further, then please share this video with any friend you think may be interested. I hope you all enjoyed listening to me waste your time.